It's the Fellowship of the Geek Show, a weekly podcast about comics, the comic book industry, and other geek pop culture. Music courtesy of Manny the Martyr. And now, on with the show! Hey there, everybody. It's the Fellowship of the Geeks podcast. My name's Thomas Chick, and joining me for this episode is Mike Marlowe. Hey, gang. Les Webster. Hello, all. And Liz Newman. Hello, everybody. With or without the tiara, we don't know, but that's okay. <laughs> My tiara has peanut butter. <laughs> <laughs> it almost had water, too, so yeah. We assume it's water. I'm not sure anymore. <laughs> contact, contact us on uh, Discord to see what the hell we're talking about. Oh, yeah. Ho- hopefully we'll have a new deleted clip <laughs> for y'all to hear and go, what the fuck? Oh, man. I would ask how y'all are doing, but I already know, so I hope everybody out there is doing okay. What's... And I'm afraid to ask, what's been going on in your corner of the galaxy? I'll keep it short tonight. <laughs> um, oh, I started my timer. Actually, when I was in band, we played that. But anyways... um. I started reading a new, well, it's not a new series. I think I get my comics monthly, so I'm not sure when this one came out, but it was the third one to Animal Castle. I'm really enjoying this title. Um, I've I've talked about it, I think, before on here. Maybe not. At, we do pre-show, and I, I don't know what I talk about where, but <laughs> um it kind of reminds me of a um, animal house. Is it Animal House? Where the animals, where the animals on the farm, they they're kind of like squared off. Well, this is kind of on a bigger range, more not just the farm that it's centered off on, and it follows a cat. I cannot remember his name right now, but he's trying to convince the other animals, you know, hey, we need our freedom. We don't have to listen to these guys. They're, you know, they they're not helping us. They're hurting us. And the the problem he's running into is, well, the talk of your freedom isn't feeding people right now. You know, we've we've got to do what we got to do to kind of get by. And this is what's working for us right now. So he's trying to convince them it it, it can work another way. You know, we just have to work together and band together because strength in numbers, they can't take you all. They can take one of us, but they can't take all of us, you know. So it's it's a pretty good little story. It's um, by Xavier Dorson and Felix Deleep. Um, artwork's really good. Like I said, I'm really enjoying the story. I, re- I remember reading... Um, is it Animal House? I feel like I'm it's, confusing okay. out with like you, Tom Belushi movie or something. You, uh, you, you are. Okay. The, the the story with the animals on the farm is called Animal Farm. Animal Farm. Okay. Mm-hmm. I was, Animal House is Jim Belushi, Tim Matheson. John and, Belushi. And, and, <laughs> John Belushi. Yep. John Belushi. I, even I got it wrong. Oh, God. <laughs> but we had to read that like maybe in eighth grade. Mm-hmm. So, so it's kind of it very. I mean, the stories are very similar. So if you enjoyed that one, you'll definitely enjoy this one. Um, kind of a hits home today kind of topic without being a hit home kind of today topic. But um, so yeah, I've I've been reading a little bit that so far out of my collection. That's what's really I'm excited to see when it's in there. Um, other than the usual, I think Batman Killing Time just started too. I haven't really read that yet. I'm hoping for something different and, you know, 
We'll see. <laughs> Good luck with that. <laughs> right. We'll see. I'm, I'm hoping that they're not going to get real cheesy with Batman right now because the movie that's about to come out, which I'm kind of upset about this because HBO, when Batman was announced, HBO was going to do a home theater release, meaning they were releasing it both at home and in the theater. Well, when they delayed the last Batman, um, it was no longer coming out. I think they said November 1st, and now it's March 5th. But um, since it landed in 2022 instead of 2021, they've now got to wait 45 days before it hits home, which I think sucks because, you know. Because you don't want to go to the theater. I, I don't think I will. I You know, I've I've always said, you know, since the pandemic and everything else, it'll be that one special movie that I really want to see on the big screen that'll take me to get to the theater again. I just, I've seen the other way and I like it better. <laughs> you know? I want to watch movies in my pajamas with my own popcorn that's not $20 for a handful, you know, so... Yeah. Well, I've been I've been hearing some real good stuff about it. Although I know there was an article or there was a review on Variety. I didn't read it, but I read the headline. It was talking about it being a darker dark night. I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? Yeah, I, it seems like every Batman movie that comes out, they say that though. You know, yeah. I I do think it's a different approach going with a year two Batman. I I think. I think sometimes people forget, not that DZ lets us, but I think sometimes people forget Batman's just a man. He doesn't have any special powers. You know, he's he had to figure this shit well, out money. on his he's own. He's got a fuck ton of money. That's, well, that's a yes. superpower. Right. Not and to I'm steal sure too much from Iron Man. but That paid a lot of hospital bills for him. But see, even Iron Man had an iron suit. You know, Batman's mm-hmm. in what, Kevlar? So quite a bit different there. But I, I think it will be interesting to see him fall on his face while he's figuring this out. And I really hope they fall back to before he became a badass, he was a detective. And maybe we'll see some of that in this movie. They're, they're supposedly really pushing the whole de- detective aspect, which really has not been shown. I mean, the closest thing I can think of off the top of my head is the. 89 Batman movie with Tim Burton where he was trying to figure out he was analyzing he was analyzing the Joker rhythm or what what it was taking what was what was in all the different makeup parts of makeup that put on you put on and all of a sudden you're laughing yeah. your ass off and you de- you're dead that's it that is basically to my knowledge, the only detective work a live action Batman's done, other yeah. than maybe Adam West. Uh, yeah, that's where well, I was ready to go. Was Adam West? They've always showed you that Batman had this intel, but not how he got it. For all we know, especially if you're if you're just a movie Batman fan, you would think that Alfred gave him all that information, right? You know, especially how I mean, not saying that Alfred was not a big part of Batman because. Holy shit, he was. But, you know, he wasn't the one doing all of the detective work. I'm sure he did some because, you know, he had to let Batman, you need to be here and you need to be here and you need to be here. But a lot of that was, you know, on Batman. I've always said any fight, everyone's like Batman versus whoever. First time around, Batman will always get his ass handed to him. Second time around, He's going to come back and do some damage because that detective kicks in and he's going to know every single thing about you the second time. Who your baby mama is, you know, (laughs) everything. And that's what makes Batman so great is he's a very smart opponent. And I think sometimes the movie Batman, they don't play that aspect up. So. No, it's more of the it's more of the badass, the vigilante, and that kind of stuff. Yeah. The the thing that I find encouraging, um, I saw this on Thirteenth Dimensions website. They did an article a couple of days ago saying that uh, in the list of names that get special thanks, 
I mean, they've got Neil Adams, Jim Aparo, Steve Englehart, Irv Novick, Denny O'Neill, and Marshall Rogers. Those are seventies creators. That was awesome. the big, the big time detective, the Dark Knight detective. Period. Yeah. If they're getting special thanks, then yeah. I mean, we're gonna see the detective work. Well, isn't it Matt Reeves who's doing this? Yeah. Yeah. They said before he got a hold of Batman that he was a really big fan, and so I'm hoping that it. it to him, it, it's something he knows to where I feel like some of the other directors, especially with some of the flops that we've seen, they didn't know who they were working with, you know, which was very apparent. And it would be nice for someone to come in and say, OK, no, he wouldn't do that. <laughs> it's, that man's it's, kill. It, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's very discouraging when you hear a director say, I don't understand this character. Yeah. And you go, mm-hmm. then why in the hell are you directing this film? If you have no clue how to handle the character, you should freaking walk away. Or leave it out. Yep. Or well, one that says that canon doesn't matter. <laughs> Snyder. But, you know, we won't go. Well, I, I wasn't going to say that name, but that's that's who I'm referring to. He, yeah. does, he says he doesn't understand that the Man of Steel. And it's like, well, it's pretty freaking clear, but okay, I'm not. We're not going to go there. Mm. Right? There's how many how many years of comics you can go and do some research and find out. You know, maybe yeah, you might be so confused. But 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 but, but you, you can still get the wrong opinion of a character. You but, can. You know, what, but you know, that's you know, that's that's a that's something for the another day. Right. So. But yeah, I'm I'm hoping that HBO will rethink this process because I don't like it. <laughs> and everybody has to do what I want, you know, because I have my TR. Well, I mean, <laughs> I, I don't think, I don't, I, I, I don't think it already changed it because, I mean, they've already said, hey, we're, we're going to do a sequel. And I'm like, well, well, no shit, you're going to do a sequel. Yeah. I mean, they already agreed and lit. It was like, but, that, you know, that's the, the most non-surprising surprise in a long time what you're actually going to do a sequel to batman oh my god oh shocker well you know i was reading something the other day where they were talking about titles coming out of dc and that 83 percent of it was batman and not just batman but it's like they they have tiers like batman or batman's rogue gallery or you know it's it's, it's, they're, they're it's bat universe yeah it's but either I, Batman proper or, or or his allies or protégés or, you know, of course, you got like Harley and that yeah. kind of stuff. Yeah. yeah. Or but spinoffs can, but, from Harley, which is still under the Batman umbrella, you know. I remember uh, Jimmy Palmiotti a few weeks back talked about this. And he, and he asked a question on Twitter. Are you getting all these books? And 90% of them is like, no. Oh, I can't. Yeah. yeah. I, I just get what I like. I was looking at my poll before um, before the show tonight, matter of fact. Batman is probably the only, this new one, the Killing Killing Time, is probably the only DC title I'm even pulling right now. It's, it fell into a rut for me. The stories just weren't, they weren't for me. You know, they, it, it's, Yeah. I'll, I'll just leave it at that. They weren't for me, you know, which is sad because before I would have to say that at least 60 to maybe even 70 percent of my polls were DC. So, well, I mean, I'm not I'm I had bought comics in a long time, but I mean, back when I was buying a ton, I seem to kind of go through phases where I may be heavily DC one time, and then I may be heavily Marvel one time, yeah. or or and there may be a balance, and and then all of a sudden I've got I've got the others, you know, yeah. image or boom, ten new like image that. titles, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I just back back then I, I kind of just I just kind of went through waves, but it, it's it's because because of stories, yeah, you know. Well, and you know, I I 
it would be cool if they could hit every market every time, but sometimes they're just not going to write what you want them to. You know, it's not that it's bad; it's just not for you. You know. Well, and it's un- it's unreasonable for you know for everything to you know you can't yeah. like everything. So I mean, and that's uh, that's something that seems to be lost nowadays. Yeah. Um, you know, everything has to be geared toward you. Well, what makes what what you like? more important than what the next person right the person who is buying the book yeah and and hey you know what if i was a creator i would rather cater to the person buying my book than the one that's not i mean right you know well, it doesn't matter what i think because i'm not buying the title anymore you know well but you, anymore right so at, one, so at one point you were buying it because you liked it and all of a sudden there's a story a storyline that you don't like, so you start stop buying it. But, but you know, you know, yeah. it's, everything's everything can be hit or miss. Yeah. Yeah. You know? And I think it was Les gave me good advice. Um, three issues. Give it three issues. If you don't like it by three, then you're not gonna like it. Get out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but give it three, and it's that's always worked for me. I give it three, and if I don't like it within that three, then it's not for me. Yeah, I mean, I, I I get that. It's the 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 thing about the thing about that is when most story arcs are five issues, it's yeah, like you're already that you're invested. Hooked. What's what's two more issues? But you know, it, it, it. But that's that's really up to you, to you. Yeah, I think the term for that is sunk cost fallacy. Yes. Or completest. <laughs> I'm not I've sure there's a difference, that. really. <laughs> really. I've run into that with a few titles. Uh, Batman was one of them. I, I got pissed off halfway through it, but it's like, damn, I've already invested this much time. I've got to finish watching the train wreck. <laughs> I paid for well, a ticket, I, damn it. <laughs> I, 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 can, I can go either way. I mean, if you, went through, if you went through my collection, you would see the original Civil War miniseries. I've got the first five issues. I don't have issue six. Why? Because there was such a long ass delay. Mm-hmm. By the time it finally came out, I was like, I don't fucking care. Yeah. I, I don't remember the story. Why? Why? Am, why don't I need to pull all that shit out and read it again so I can get the? the so you know. Yeah. Because in five and, months, do you know how many other comics you've collected during that time? Yeah. You bunch. know. Yeah. Stuff you're actually so, enjoying, apparently. And, there was one that was like that for me, too, and it was like, damn, I'm going to have to go back and read all these again because I don't really remember because it was delayed. I think his wife had a baby, which I'm sorry, I don't understand how that affects your your, your coloring or whatever he did on the book, but it's like she had the baby, not you. <laughs> Get well, to work. I mean, if he's, a, if, he, if he's a good husband, he's helping her out. Yeah, mm. but, you know. <laughs> Got to put oh, okay. food in that house, you know. But yeah, like I said, it's understandable. But I, I bet you money that title lost a lot of people because that time he took off in between there. Well, so but yeah, the the the, the, the thing. The, speak about delays, and we're way 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 off track. Right. <laughs> the, the delays they're having right now. The thing. The thing that really i'm going i'm really scratching my head is like i i talked uh you know they've delayed just league 75 which is the big episode where everybody supposedly died it's killed mm-hmm. off and i said well it's going to be delayed by a couple of months and the reason is is because of the issues with with the uh, the paper and all that yeah. and i'm like but you're putting out books now that have Five or six different variant covers. You know, stop that shit yep. and get the rest of the other books out, and you're not really going to lose that much because whatever you're losing from the variant covers of books that you're going to sell anyway, mm-hmm. you make it for the book that you're making people wait a couple months for. That you don't understand spoilers this for all over the internet. Yep. Amen, brother Thomas. <laughs> I'm right there with you. I just, I just said like, okay, you know, and, and certain, and certain publishers, which I'm, I will not mention names, that has, and we've talked about in the past, that have ten, ten different covers. 
at least. For a book, and I'm like, how can they do it? Of course, they have a lower, uh, a lower, uh, readership. Well, not readership, but print. Print quantities. Print quantities. Mm-hmm. But I'm just like, but still. Yeah. You know, I just, I, do, I don't understand the thinking here. Is mm-hmm. okay, we're going to, we're going to have all these books wait four or five months because we don't have the paper, but this book that we're going to have out come out next week is going to have five covers and <laughs> it, buy them all, please. Yeah. I, mean, it's, I, I, I it, it's, 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 See, as, it's maddening. As a person who used to collect a lot of the variant covers, if they offered something to where I could buy the comic and then like maybe in the same comic book size print of the cover, like a glossy print or something, I would have been happy with that. I, I wasn't buying five titles. But it was the artwork I was interested in. So I, I think if they want to really cut down, because like me, I'm not reading five books. I'm going to read one of them, but I've collected the other for the artwork. So well, they, the, the, that's an option they should give. So you ain't wasting 30 pages of comics that you're not going to read five times, you know? Well, it's just they're, they're still thinking 90s, 2000s, and yeah. I'm sorry, we're in 2022. It's a, it is a new reality. Yeah. That's, it, that's I, I just, I, you know. Well, they're going to have to start doing something like with everybody making a shift towards digital. They're going to have to do something about those people who, like me, liked the artwork. They did. They made when records, the awesome album work. They turned that into art prints when they made CDs and stuff. So it was kind of like they they found a way where you could have both. The comic book world's going to have to get together and go. Okay, you know, we were selling thirty. Maybe we should sell just the art. I'd pay five bucks for art, you know. So that's just my opinion, though. Well, either that or download the image off the internet and print it out your on your own. There you go. If you had a good printer of good quality, I don't. Uh, <laughs> I'm too lazy. <laughs> you know? so I'd rather it just be there where I could bag and board it and hang it if I want, you know. Well, you get you get a good printer, and you don't have to worry about spending all that money True. on the prints. So, I mean, you can take the barcode off the front. <laughs> it, you know, it's it, what you know, mm-hmm. whatever. It's just it, it just it, it just kind of floored me when I read that the other day about some of these books being delayed because and it's because of the paper shortage. I'm like, but you've got. You know, I'm looking. I'm looking at the books that are coming out in May, and here's this title, and here's this ver- cover. Here's the main cover. Here's the yep. main cover. Here's another very cover. Here's another cover, and another one. I'm going. Stop. Obviously, the paper shortage is just not even making. It, they're not even thinking about. Well, maybe mm-hmm. we need to rethink this because it, it hasn't they're, hit they're, them yet. It's well, you know, you would think. Well, we'll see what happens when I, I don't know. I don't. I don't know what it's going to take. It's going to take people not buying for them the, for them to stop. You know, stop. But exactly. that, that's not going. That's but that's that's never going to happen. Yeah, you know, I the, did, the, 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 the retailers are going to keep ordering because they have customers saying, "I want that." Yeah. So it's really up to us to stop this, and it's not going to happen. Yeah. I just I got tired of trying to keep up, and with my I, this is gonna sound so stupid, but with my anxieties, if I can't complete something, it drives me crazy, and I couldn't keep up. So, you know, generic or blank covers for me now. I'm clean. <laughs> it's been two years. <laughs> All right. Anything else? No, that's it. Not much this week. No, well, I kind of went off on Batman. You know, I yeah. opened that can, so. Yeah. Well, like I said, I from from what I've heard, it's been it's been it's been positive. I, I not that I've really read a lot of reviews, but I've just heard, hey, hey, this is this is pretty good. So. 
Yes. We'll see. Well, I have to block Batman now for my computer because I have to wait 45 days to see it. So <laughs> mm-hmm. Pretty much. I'll have to block that out so I don't get spoiled. <laughs> Which I know a lot of people are going to hate it just because, you know. Because everybody, the, somebody always does. Well, yeah, and there's like a group of people right now who just hate on everything that's not a certain thing. So it's going to get a lot of hate, no matter if it's the best thing that DC's ever put out. It's going to get a lot of hate. Yeah, there's there's a, there's a certain group that will do that. And uh-huh. they've, they've been – I won't go, go into much more about that, but – yeah. uh, there, 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 there is a, a a campaign going on, especially involving the Oscars, and I'm just going, really? Yeah. So, so you're so you want this particular director to get an Oscar, and you know he, he doesn't yeah. deserve it. He got it because the fans voted it in. It wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't one. You know, among his peers, it was a fan vote. Okay. Well, I mean, that happens with the All-Star game, too. So, I mean. Yeah. Hmm. Anyway. That's crazy. Mm-hmm. So, is it, all right. Is it my turn? Yes, yep. it is your turn. It's your turn. Okay. So, I watched a documentary this week. Hey. Um, in addition to getting He's back. In addition to getting <laughs> sick, but that's a different problem altogether. I'm still fighting that one. But um, I saw a documentary from 2019 and it is called memory the origins of alien Ooh. yeah it's pretty good um and it's about a really cool movie too so um but yeah this is the very much the backstory and uh it would be 40 years after the release mm-hmm. so it's the backstory of the movie alien and where all of that came from and um some really interesting interviews um some of these folks are not obviously still around um but actually managed to pull some old interviews like from dan o'bannon and actually i want to say they even had some shots of ridley scott um i don't he wasn't really involved in the documentary but they pulled some footage of him from previous interviews and stuff um and it's and obviously H.R. Giger is not still around either, but um, they pulled some stuff from him too. Um, so it's 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 a really interesting story. Um, it it's got some 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 cool twists in it that people probably don't know anything about. Um, so it, it's it kind of it's it's an interesting kind of view of of the filmmaking process, um, kind of through the lens of one movie. Um, um, they actually, it was, there was a fun, there was a fun bit about the, the legendary, um, I mean, not, not a small amount, amount of this documentary is on, is based on the chestburster scene because it's a huge key moment in that movie. Mm-hmm. Um, he, hearing Veronica Cartwright talk about that scene was very yeah. interesting to say the least. Oh, I bet. Um, and it, it, they actually even found some some footage that was cut out of the film with her in it as they were, ta- as she was talking about it. It was pretty cool. It's a pretty cool little mm. moment in this documentary. Um, but yeah, it's totally, totally worth checking out, especially if you're a fan of the movie. Yeah. And what's that on? Uh, I watched it on Tubi. On Tubi. Okay. Definitely. Definitely look for that. Yeah. Sounds good. It does. Um, did they ever? Did they mention the inspiration for the, for the story? Or did supposedly? Um, they mentioned parallels to several movies. Okay. Um, I, 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 I've always I had always heard, but then again, you know, you know how things go. That one of the inspirations for the movie was it. Um, Oh God! Was it? Uh, it came from outer space, or I don't remember what it is now. Right now, I'm blanking on the name. Yeah, God. there was one that was similar to that. I'm not. I'm not remembering off the top of my head what the name of it was either. But, yeah, there was one that was similar to that. Um, that's one of the ones that got listed. I went to Stephen King when he said it. Yeah, no. I, the way he paused, I could tell there was more to it. 
Do you remember? Do you remember the, the the film Les? It conquered the world. No. No, because that's 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 the one. Um, that's the one with Peter Graves and Lee Van Cleef. Yeah. Uh, this is it. Came, okay, it came from outer space. That is it. Because that's that is. No, that's not it. Because that has Russell Johnson in it. But the, the whole premise is 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 uh, a a ship go, goes to I don't remember the planet to to find the 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 survivors of the previous expedition and found out there was only one left one survived and they found evidence that one of the people was killed by shot so they were bringing them back to Earth to try them and all that and meanwhile they found out that there was actually there was actually a creature on the planet and it stole away in, on the ship and started killing people I just rem- I just can't remember what it's called right now hmm. but yeah when I first when I first saw that one which I saw that after Alien I was like Boy, I mean, it was. I mean, it's the parallels are just. I mean, they're there because hmm. I had not seen anything like that before. And I am just. I'll have to look it up and and we'll just put it in the notes because I am so freaking. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, no problem. We can do that. Because I don't want to, I don't want to tie up things any further than I've already done. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. Anything else? No, that's what I got. Okay, Les. I watched a series on Netflix that came out very recently, and I recommend it. It's only eight episodes each episode is under 30 minutes it's i'm trying to get this right the woman who lives across the street from the girl in the window mm-hmm. and this is with Kristen, or yeah Kristen bell uh it's a murder mystery and it sounds like it's a comedy. There are some funny lines in it, but it is definitely not a comedy. <laughs> and I recommend this because this is, was so good. I started watching it. I said, okay, I'll watch, uh, I'll watch an hour or so of it, see what goes on. And I ended up, uh, watching the whole run. Without blinking an eye, it was that much fun, and they kept you guessing the whole time. Mm. So uh, try that one out. It's, it's really well done. A mm. lot of fun. Cool. And what was it called again? Hmm. The woman in the house across the street from the girl in the window. Okay. That's a long one. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's longer than one of the episodes, so, you know. <laughs> <laughs> On Netflix. Oh. All right. Anything else? No, that's about it for me. Okay. Um... Uh... For me, don't really have a lot this week. Um, just had other things kind of going on. Um, I mean, I still did some more uh, Mystery Science Theater 3000. I, I, I think part of it's just the, not only the nostalgia, but just needing needing the laughs. Um, and, and the thing is, is I've been watching on Twitch and and – they will throw in some of the uh, – there's a few riff tracks, but not a whole heck of a lot because Riff Tracks has their own channel. 
but the cinema Titanic and the film crew. Um, they'll, they'll have those on there. And it's kind of fun watching some of those. Because uh, Cinema Titanic was Joel, Trace, Elvis, uh, Frank, and Mary Jo Peel. So essentially kind of the founders, with the exception of adding Frank and Mary Jo, uh, kind of kind of getting back together. And this was only for a short period of time before Joel re- uh, regained control of MST3K. And then film crew is basically Riff Tracks. It's it's those guys. It's it's Mike, uh, Kevin, and and Bill. The the one Riff Track they showed. I'm sorry, I can't get through it, but I always watch the beginning for for a couple reasons. I watched the short that they throw up before. before. It was a live show. Uh, the one that they did was Miami Connection. Okay. The, have you seen that one, Les? Yes. I, I can't. I really can't get through it. It's basically because I just I, I lose interest in the damn movie. But uh, I always watch the beginning because this was this was filmed in the eighties and it is pure eighties. Mikey will love it. Oh my God. Well, I mean, because you got everybody dressed like Duran Duran and 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 all, and all that. Um, but I always have to get through the point because the opening sequence is where the, um, a drug deal is about to go down and all of a sudden ninjas out of nowhere kill everybody and grab the drugs and the money. Sure. But you of course. Got, but of Damn course. ninjas. But, but you got this music going on. You got this 80s music going on. And out of nowhere, I, you know, because I was thinking, because I was like, I've heard this kind of beat before. And then out of nowhere, Kevin Murphy goes, I come from a land down under. And I'm like, that's it. That's it. Oh, God, get out of my head. Wow. <laughs> <sighs> so. So. But, yeah, you definitely need to watch the short before that. I need to see if I can find it. Um about measuring and you have the, the milkman that tells you how this is like late 60s early 70s but we got the milkman who also turns into measuring man who has a belt of measuring tools including this one thing let's let's be honest it looks like it's a glitter dildo you're just like what the hell is that <laughs> i mean they even ask it's like what is that thing Wow. But yeah, it's it's kind of out there. <laughs> so I'll have to see if I can find the, the, the Riff Trex version of that and then the and then, then then the short itself. And we'll try to get that in show notes. Mm-hmm. So. All right, before we get into th- this week's fun stuff, um we kind of mentioned it earlier. I think Les mentioned earlier that we do have uh, a Discord. Um, it's been up for a little over a year now. Uh, we post news items. We post funny stuff. We post videos. Uh, recently, I've been actually putting up uh, – this, there's this guy that I've been following, started following. He's been doing this uh, Choose Three Albums from this group. From this particular year, and it's been kind of interesting seeing some of the some of the responses. I know there's been a couple of, there's been a couple of years that I just go uh, I can't do it I can't I can't narrow I, I eventually narrow down to three but I'm putting up two or three alternates too. I think the last thing I put up was 81. Uh, as as if this so. recording it's like 81. So I he posted 85 today. So I've got all of those. And I'll start posting the rest of those, and it'll be kind of interesting to see how what everybody's responses are. So that's been a little fun. Well, we have uh, uh, activities like we'll do a movie night on just on Discord, which we need to do one here, in not too distant future. Just have a little fun. But uh, 
you know, Discord's free to sign up. The app is free uh, wherever you get your apps for um, for Android or um, or Apple. Um, we have a we have an invite on our homepage, www.thefellowshipofthegeeks.net. So uh, come join us. Come join the fun. Okay. Just leave me out there to dry. Thank you, Thank you. Appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah. What yeah. he said. I'm a little slow tonight. I hate you guys. <laughs> <laughs> okay. This week uh, we had uh, we have a couple guests with us. Um, Lucas. Sarah Sarah Vellini, Sarah Vellini. Sarah Vellini. and then Clint Gilbert, who have a Kickstarter. She's going to be starting up March fifteenth for a new book called The Last Panther. Uh, there they join us to kind of talk about the talk about the story and how it came about. Um, it's a really the, the 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 history of just the guys alone was kind of interesting how they met and and, and all that. Mm-hmm. Talk a little bit about the industry. So, um, without any further ado, here is the interview. We are here with Lucas Cervellini and Clint Gilbert, who have a new Kickstarter starting on March fifteenth. And the title is The Last Panther. Uh, thank you guys for joining us. Thank you guys for inviting us. Thanks for having us. Yeah. Um, tell us a little bit about this book. What's it about? So the Panther, the Last Panther book is it's a, it's a kind of a complicated question. It is a, uh, let's say it's, it's a other world alternative history setting um, with a a particular plot line that follows one one family and weaves through out a Gonna weave through a country. I'm trying to I'm trying to describe it without giving too much away, but it's essentially gonna be an alternate. It's an all the setting is gonna be an alternate United States, essentially that is no longer the United States. Um, Lucas and I got to talking about wanting to write an original book after the um, the Alice books that we put that that we were working on the Alice and Mobland books and. I told him I had this idea where there would be an uprising and the Native Americans would have been able to stop the westward expansion of the United States. And so when did I, when was that, Lucas? That was two and a half years ago. Oh. Um, can't remember. Yeah, it was, it's, it's been a while, though. I think we were finishing running Alice number one, the Kickstarter, probably in December. I know we're running October of 2020, 2020, actually. And then we end up with the reward somewhere around January and probably February. We're already talking. We already got number two of Alice written. uh, And we just, you know, we're going with that because we're already done. And you were like, you know what? We need to start talking about this. So you start explaining to me all this idea that you have. Right. But the original concept was so long before that. Originally, Last Panther was supposed to be our first title. Um, the pandemic actually shut down Lucas's shop and he had the art for uh, Alice and Mobland already started. And so the, it, it leapfrogged Panther, which gave me it gave me more time to to research. Essentially, what this turned into was a labor of love that was a, a vast research project. I needed to find it was important to me that I found a point in history in our actual recorded history where just a few things, you know, a butterfly wing here and a, and a, and a, and a, a puff of air, a puff of wind there could have turned the tides. So I dove into 
I dove into the history of the United States, in particular the westward expansion and the displacement of, the, of Native Americans, starting starting in the 1820s and went all the way through essentially the end of the 1800s. And I found, I, after several months of research, I found my spot. So, where Panther begins in the sense that it's the world it's set in is a world that Tecumseh survives Black Hawk's War in 1932. I'm sorry, in 1832. I do that all the time. And what he was doing at the time was building an actual confederacy, for lack of better words, of of native tribes he was he was unionizing them in a sense that the collective good um outweighed whatever territorial you know claims or spats that they had throughout history and was getting the attention of the united states and government and the, and the u.s army and through a sort through through a, a sorted process that included the Canadians being bought off by the U.S. government and abandoning the natives, and the French walking away. Um, Tecumseh was uh, they were surrounded. They fought valiantly, but he he succumbed and he was killed and his. His dreams of unifying the native tribes to collectively fight the westward expansion of the white man died with him. And so in my world, in the, la in the world of the Last Panther, Tecumseh survives that attack. And everything from that point unfurls very differently. So we have a map that is essentially what... What, what the map actually looked like in um, 1832, which was Black Hawk's War. Um, I go through to about 1840, but that's where it's essentially cemented. And so we are in a, we're in a setting of a world where we have um, the East, is controlled entirely by the United States, but a large swath of the of the center of the country and all of the Great Plains, and even a small part of the Midwest is is a native nation, and they are um, they are collectively um, involved in central governance, but have obviously their historical issues and this is a world where neither the united the, neither the united states or the native nation have ever had a civil war but both particularly probably are headed that way because of the differences so that's our that that's going to be our setting and we follow um we follow one particular family um and the relationship between uh, a warrior, one of the Panthers, uh, that has that is in exile um, and, and living in the Oregon Territory with uh, with this particular family and the and 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 this little boy, uh, twelve year old boy, Maddie is our, is going to be is going to be our main character, and um, there's. There's one of the, the Panthers is uh, the, the pan the last Panther is, is going to be two crows and that's going to be a going to be a Kiowa warrior that is out in the far, far west living outside of the skirmishes that exist back between the native nation and the United States. Hmm. That sounds interesting. It's complicated, I'll admit, um, but it's um, all, all history often is complicated. Yeah, it's kind of what makes it, it entertaining. Is. It, it's um, it became 
it, it almost became Pandora's box, to be honest. Um, I got so enveloped in creating a world and a setting and literally looked up after months of working on this to realize, well, you've created this world, but you don't have a story. I mean, the cool thing, as it sounds, I guess you explained it as complex from from the thinking part of it, the, the background, the setting. And and at some point, it, to me, it was like trying to follow because, you know, I have to tie it up to a lot of uh, history and a bunch of things that actually happen. Uh, but the cool part is, uh, you know, seeing the book now completed in print and, and the way it developed when you follow into this world through the characters it makes it a lot smoother. It's like you you catch up and and and, and again, it's kind of hard to tell the whole thing without telling too much. <laughs> right. Uh, but I mean, you you will follow a little more. It's it's super easy to get into it. I mean, it's it's it was uh, we had the opportunity to show a few people some some of the samples and the pages and like I said, issue number one is completed. Um, wow. So completed with inks, color, everything. Uh, I think we only need to finish the just add the script into the pages, which is also already written, but it's super easy going. The, uh, we have um, well, Danny, the artist that, that work in this book, uh, well, he did a, an amazing job uh, telling the story. There's a few scenes that are like, it help a lot to, to follow it. It's super cool. I mean, we got maps and visual. You no, know, it makes it a lot easier. That's cool. So I'm tasked with, with in this book, um, progressing through this story of Maddie and his family. So Maddie is going. Maddie is um, his mother is a native, and his father is Canadian, and they they met during the during the the, the war, um, and. Her father, the chief of the Kiowa, uh, encouraged them to move to the west. The Oregon Territory is going to essentially be going to be the Pacific Northwest, obviously, and it's going to be the only it's going to be the only place in the in continental North America that is um, that that's basically a safe zone for people that don't want to live in the, in a world that is in constant where you're in constant danger where there's constant skirmish um we have you know we have a map that that includes specifically very intense uh fighting that's that's raged in the south particularly um over the arkansas territory and what we're what what's going to be the the Comanche territory, which is essentially be the all of the all of the south and southeast of the native land, and that is going to be this is going to be post Trail of Tears. So you have you have Comanche that have been displaced and are still very displeased and are not are not pleased with the native nations' uh, decision to allow. The U.S. government to keep the the far southeast that was taken from them, and and it's going to include all the people we know. So the pre we had a we've got a three page preview that's in the back of Alice in Mobland number two, and it starts with um, it starts the, I think that the the first the first panel we see is a um, uh, a U.S. soldier. That is at Fort Smith in the Arkansas Territory, and sitting at a table, and that is Jefferson Davis. That I showed, I gave Danny a picture of Jefferson Davis and said, "This is who this is." And um, he's no longer; he's obviously not the the in, affiliated with the U.S. Con, with the with the Confederate States because there were no Confederate States. He's now just going. He's now going to be a general of the Southern forces in the U.S. Army. Um, Sitting Bull uh, is going to be the, essentially the dignitary um, that lives.
lives in the in the northern plains area where the where the the land borders let's say are are less in uh it, it, it's a less complicated situation that the 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 residents of of both countries in the in the northern portions are much more comfortable with their their current setting than than what's going on in the south. Hmm. And how long is this story or the first issue? What we about twenty seven pages? Is that I think that's where at uh, twenty seven, twenty eight pages. What did we stop at on, on issue one? Lucas, do you remember? We were talking about uh, I think we said somewhere on the twenty eight pages. Twenty eight, is that what it ended up? Twenty eight, yeah, that's yeah. what it, it wrapped up in twenty seven, twenty eight. That was the, the main idea. Writing these things of uh, we've we've learned some interesting lessons in that you have these you have these ideas of other things that you want to include. Hey, I need to put a map here, and hey, I want to put this page here, and we need to put a thank you page here. Yeah. And you find yourself starting to flip imaginary pages and, and then argue <laughs> with one another. No, no, it starts here. No, no, this is page one. No, no, and the, the back of my hand is page one, not the palm of my hand. And so after a lot of those, after a lot of wrangling there, then you have to, you have to wedge, kind of have to find your spot to cut these things. And so what I think that I have is an initial story arc that can pro- will probably take us, I anticipate, somewhere between eight and ten issues, just kind of depending on how far we stretch it out. Um, but the intent is this will be an ongoing. That's just going to be our first story arc. Cool. Yeah, you get to find those those like like you were saying, you know, you get the script, you got nothing in your hand, then you got the script and then you gotta break it down and see, okay, how many issues are we gonna do with this and then how many pages can we break it down to? And then you start like trying to figure out, okay, is this enough? Are we showing enough? Do we need to show a little more? Yeah. Are we showing too much? Yeah, uh, and the and, second one and yeah. And, got, and then let's go back to the first one. Let's change this. Let's right. move that over there. Well, and honestly, what I've you know I've, I've I've sat here and I've spent this time describing you know kind of a, this thematic this this world that's been created. It's really not the story. It's it it the world in itself is going to be very much a character. Um, but I'm tasked in this sense with um, giving you some history to catch to catch everyone up on what's happened in the past, why things are the way that they are. Um, yeah in a way that is clear that I'm telling, you know, I, I kind of see it as, um, it's kind of like, this is kind of like the, like Watchmen, um, in the sense that you've got this parallel story arc that's going on that some people don't even bother to read because it's so wordy, but (laughs) in, in this sense, it's really, it's really important, you know? Um, and so that's, that's been the, that's been the challenge with this book, particularly in, in figuring out, uh, what needs to go where and in 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 what order? Um, because I have I have kind of this vast world to unfurl uh, and, and catch everybody up on. Yeah. Yeah, and that gets to be the trick with a if you're aiming for a long arc like that. I mean, knowing what you can get away with holding off for a couple of issues to share with your audience can be a real trick. Right. It really is. Because I know it, Lucas knows it. You know, I, 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 I'm married to this story. You know, I've, 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 I've run this and rerun this and 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 written and rewritten and edited. And I, I can tell you, you know, I can tell you on a given day in my little world what has happened. But it, it's it's difficult. It's difficult to begin the story every time. Whenever somebody says, "Hey, Last Panther, what's that all about?" Uh, here we go. How much time you got? Then, you know that it, 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 it's 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 difficult, and also in the sense that Lucas and I also we've also kind of committed that well, there's we can we can get into certain portions of it, but there's also portions that we want to you know we want everybody to read for themselves and find out, figure out some of this stuff, and 
see exactly where we're going and what this is about. I think it's a really good time. I think that it's it's it sounds really academic um, in in its description, but I think that it ends up being um, it's actually pretty lighthearted. Uh, the issue one has actually got some. It's a it's a real story about real people in a really really difficult setting to create and describe that makes sense right and and the the cool thing is that as long as you've got both you can swing your readers around to the one that they don't necessarily connect with automatically because a lot of people there's gonna be a lot of people that come to it for a story and then there's going to be some people that come to it for the alt history Um, and as long as you can swing it back and forth pretty conveniently then you'll be in great shape right always hope right it's the idea anyway <laughs> and when does this launch this should be on Mar- march 15 somewhere around march 15 the idea was original for uh march 1st mm-hmm. uh and then we were waiting on mock-ups our work and some other stuff that needed to be done so what we're basically you know in terms of for us to be able to get a better result on the artwork, on the Kickstarter and everything else. So we kind of decided that it wouldn't be a bad idea to push it another maybe a week, 15 days, just get everything right. the way we want it. And from there, we'll push it to uh, to to March 15th, which I think should be enough time to get everything else set up. Uh, and also, it, it sort of comes along with the, with the fact that we are – in a way, forging and finish closing um, what are what is Holdfast, which is the you know it's our publishing company basically. So it, it it came together with like setting the company, getting the accounts, getting the Kickstarters, getting the public, finishing Alice, <laughs> yeah, getting the new book. So yeah, we we kind of had to push it a little bit. Yeah, we really jumped into this thing with both feet. We um, what turned into, hey, we ought to put something together one day. Turned into, hey, I have all this time on my hands, and I've got, I've got a book, you know, that has already been started. Let's go to work doing that. No, by the way, how are we gonna, how are we gonna put it out? How are we gonna publish it? And and then, you know, we the the initial thought was, well, let's do that. Let's do that, and we'll. Put, and Lucas had had some history on Kickstarter prior, um, and and actually we, uh, had turned me on to some just some projects from some some different some different indie stuff, and then some you know some different big guys that were that were that were launching things on Kickstarter, and so we got really familiar with that platform. Yeah. Um, and that became kind of a, the idea was, well, let's let's do that on our own, and then we'll have something in hand, and then we'll take the we'll take the last panther, and we'll we'll mock it up, and we'll submit it, and we'll see if we can get see if we can get any interest from from you know one of the labels. Um, and I have in my in my uh, my day job, um, I'm an attorney, and I have, um, I would not have guessed that just by the way. (laughs) Right. Yeah. I know. Kind of what I like. Kind of like to keep people uh, a little bit uh, off balance on that. Right. Right. Um, (laughs) No, it's, and and what's funny is that in my day job, there's, there's a lot of people that, that would have, would never guess whenever I take off the, uh, the suit and the long sleeve shirt that I'm, that I've double sleeved and, Right. And, right. Yeah. So. I'd be like, uh, hell yeah, I'm in yeah, good one, hands. <laughs> get a, one foot in each world. So. Right. Uh, but I have I actually I have a one I have a, a long a long time friend that um, that is uh, he's he's an owner of of a number of comic book stores all throughout the Metroplex and I I do all of his. Um, I get, he likes to say I'm in his in-house counsel, and what that means is I pretty much do his leases for credit at his stores, and cool. what what legal work that I can do that he runs into. And so he has um, he has some he has some industry savvy, and has certainly 
he's certainly been around the block a number of times over the last 30 years with people that he's known or, you know, customers of his coming and bringing um, original work. And he was the one that actually talked us into guys, keep it on Kickstarter. You don't, what do you, what do you want to, are you going to go show it to one of the labels and have and turn it over to them? Um, you know, the idea was essentially go to Kickstarter, put it together yourself. I, I can certainly create a, you know, create a, a, an entity and, and jump to those hoops. So that's what we did. We started, we decided that, that we would start hold fast comics and start with, with Alice. I think Alice number two was the first under the, the under that label actually. Um, and retroactively put any copies of Alice one back underneath it and doing everything, doing everything um, ourselves essentially. So, but that does then create, you know, obviously the log jams of, you know, you do these Kickstarters, you sell these books and you got to sit down and put it all together and mail it all out. You got to get it, you know, you got to get everybody the book. So, Wait, yeah, you're so, saying it's work? What now? <laughs> I know. Yeah. So, I, I, all I no signed way. up for was, the, was just a type, was just a type script. That's all I was. That's all I was. <laughs> <laughs> and that's sadly really <laughs> how, it's, how it's been for poor Lucas. Actually, he's got a little bit of a, a more flexible schedule than I do sometimes. So, um, but yeah, that. What I think we've had. I think we've had, we've had we've had the first issue of Last Panther in a can for. Going on what five months now, um, but we were we were waiting for the the Kickstarter to end for Alice Two, and then to get that out, and then we were up against at that point the holidays, kind of the first of the year. We decided, well, probably not a great time to run this right now. Nobody's paying attention, and everybody's just getting over the holiday hangover. So let's let's bump this out. So right. We, you guys have done pretty well on Kickstarter, though, right? Alice 2, what was it, two hours and you were funded? Yeah, Alice number two was about, I think the first one took like about, a couple, I'll say, 10 days. Yeah. And number two, once we got a little run, uh, it probably took about say, 10, 10 hours. Within yeah. 10 hours, it, we were like almost funded. Yeah, I don't even three. know if it was that long. It was, it was in that first, yeah. We, it, was, we, it was pretty quick, though. Yeah. It was right. quick. It was just a handful of hours. I know by the time I got there, it was like, wow, <laughs> this is pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, we kept, and we certainly kept our expectations modest on it. I mean, we're, it, you know, Alice had, Alice had a following. There were a lot of people that um, had seen it, like like you had, Liz, you know, that, that, that knew Lucas and and had seen that, and he certainly shared a lot of that. Lucas has Lucas has a, a you know a rather impressive following on um, Instagram and Facebook and you know just his different all of the different art that he puts up and through his tattooing and the painting that he does and all of the various artwork that he does yeah. um, and so that instantly became kind of a a captured kind of a captured audience that we so like the fan base it, it took yeah. it from there yeah yeah. Well, I, I think what sold me on it is when I met Lucas and to hear him talk about it, you could see that he honestly believed in his story. He was going to make it work. And, you know, you could tell the story was right there. I, I saw some of the artwork. So when I heard the first issue was coming out, or for me, it was a proud moment for him, you know, because it was like, you did it. You got no, your story thank, out. Thank you. You know, you you told your story and, you know, and then for the second one being funded so quickly, that blew me away. So I'm I'm, I'm really excited for you. I, I hope Last Panther does as well, too. I, I think, like you said, with your fan base and the story ideal, I think it'll it'll do really well also. So we've gotten really good. Thank, response. You, thank you. Yeah, we've gotten really good response so far. We've uh we've been slowly revealing some some of the art um and and kind of just starting to give a little bit of a little bit away about what you know, 
what the at least what the the setting generally is going to be on Panther, and it's gotten it really really good reaction thus far. I mean, I'm 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 really really pleased to this point about the what we've gotten off the the Facebook page and Instagram and where we've where we've been putting these things, and we have the um, we have the the Kickstarter ready to launch. I think we're sitting on go, um, just waiting for a few few last details to sort themselves out. So. That's awesome. Yeah, and then to your point, Liz, it was, you know, it was honestly whenever Lucas tapped me and wanted, you know, me to originally help with really just some translation work more than anything um, with La- with with Allison Mobland. Um, that was, I mean, it, it was an honor for me just because I, I, you know, I, I, he's, he's the talent. I mean, and they, if you've seen his artwork, it's incredible. Right. And, um, you know, it was, it was, it's, I was honored to do it. It was scary because I mean, I knew, I knew, like you said, when he talked about Alice, when he showed, you know, when he showed the, the Tran, the big tiger, um, and you know, the, the big splash page that he had that was hanging up in his shop. I mean, he's, yep really really proud of that and so you know that was that was awesome to help him get that done and you know that was that's what we said when we finished that is give or take we if we don't sell one damn copy of this man we just did it you know we yeah we're gonna we're gonna publish this thing we're gonna get it out there if nobody but customers in his tattoo shop come and buy a copy you know once a month you'll always be able to say you took something from concept to art yeah. script, you know, I and, did and, that. and published it. Yep. That's, it was his baby for sure. Absolutely. That's a, that's a great attitude to have too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's it. And so now, you know, and that's what it's, you know, um, honestly, we, 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 we got two issues of his baby out and the last Panther's mine. I mean, yep. and, 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 you know, on that one, it's actually Lucas actually isn't even um, he's not actually doing the art on that one. He recognized that with the demands that he had once he got back into, you know, the full swing of things and back in the shop. And, you know, he's he's incredible at anything that he does. And so it's no surprise that, you know, his, he's booked up solid for months and tattoo, you know, and tattoo. Yeah. work. So, you know, that said, um you know, he recognized that this was not going to be something that he could tackle and really honestly do with, you know, everything firing back up and going back to work uh, in his busy schedule. And not to mention you know, the with a, a baby. I had a newborn they, they had a right. baby last year. So, you know, he's got three young kids. So, so yeah, what, what I stumbled into whenever I walked in and met Lucas was this amazing um slate of artists that he's friends with and, and particularly back in argentina mm-hmm. um there's a daniel terraza that's actually doing um the art for all the all of the interior art for um the last panther it, it we, we we got a we had a cool it. roster though we we can complain yeah. that was that was amazing yeah he's doing pretty cool we got we got danny we got Danny number two. We got Leo. We got uh, Marcelo Sosa working for us and Alice, which uh, was my former teacher, though. Wow. Um, we had um, Juan Bobillo yeah. also work for Marvel. Uh, I talked to um, – have some talks to uh, – I don't know if you're familiar with uh, Ariel Oliveri. He used to do Lobo for years. Um so we have a couple conversations. We got another one coming up that we just got the news today that he might participate on something that it's it's a pretty big name though. Ah, oh, nice. Wow. Yeah, I don't know. We should should we say something or? Man, that's up to you. He, he right. called me. He called me giddy like a like a school kid this afternoon whenever he got he got this message. So yeah, it's pretty cool. I think I think we could give you like a little. I mean, he said yes. I, I got his yes. So, and it was a truly for what I got to learn from him in the last couple of months, uh, um, 
you know, just talking to him and you know getting to learn how how good how humble this guy is. So can't give like um oh, oh man should I say that Glenn? <laughs> it's it's really good. It's hard we to like know what to get, what you can get away with, isn't it? <laughs> it's tough. Man, you created this mess. You get out of it. <laughs> okay, I'm not gonna say. It's just that everyone on everyone in the comic world will know who it is. <laughs> Look, I'm, I'm gonna tell this to you, Liz, and you can keep it with the guys if you guys want to come in. So, I'm a big, big fan of this dude. And it's not Scotty Young. It's the other one. Ah. There was two things that I will buy always. I'm trying to remember, but yeah. Well, don't blurt it out now. Don't blurt it out. (laughs) I I won't blurt it out. It's a name. It's a a known quantity. It's big. It's really big, especially from two dudes in in, uh, Garland, Texas with a half-assed comic label and big dream so yeah it's it's impressive it's pretty cool yeah that was gonna be good. so this person is supposed to be participating on a um cover for the next alice and hopefully i mean we can offer him do some more stuff if we could that'll be amazing but the cool part of it is like he was terribly humble about doing this and um you know very very nice uh, just to participate just give us the opportunity to hear us and you know i try to hit some other guys sometimes like maybe busier or where they have a little bit of an attitude and you, you find everything you know right and this for the caliber of this dude uh, it was really really cool for him to come that way and be like hey yes guys I, i'll do it oh that's, wow that's awesome you know, i'm gonna send that pretty sure you can't see it so <laughs> but don't say okay. anything wow yeah, that one. <laughs> that that's pretty cool. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. <laughs> yeah, as you can imagine, you know, Liz, that I've been reading this dude for a while. And, yeah. And when he texts back to me doing that, saying like, "Yes, I can do that," I was like, "Oh my god, <laughs> dude, you don't know what just happened." <laughs> you know, comics has hit a, a different, a different vibe here lately. I. I hope I don't get myself in trouble and go off on the rails on this, but <laughs> <laughs> I will. It's a matter of time. Uh, but you know, like with Kickstarter and stuff, we're seeing a lot of big names go over to Kickstart, and we've also seen a lot of really even bigger names go over to you know Substack now. So it's like they're all moving away from the industry. It's or, changing though. That's, know, that's my big guess. I think there's a, there's a new take on it, and and you're not far from what you said. I mean, you have. Um, to me, it it feels like you know you have this you know, big names like Marvel and, and DC and all you know they they have been out there forever, yep. and and sometimes at some point they get to rewrite and rewrite so many times some some of the same things. I mean they stop creating so much, yep. um, and a bunch of the guys that work in there they I guess they started and I'm telling you this because this and again I'm just bringing names like Marvel or DC, but then you have things like Disney and uh, other big corporations that are like right. crazy where I don't know I remember um on, on the first try attempt that I had to run Alice and Moblin like forever ago that it was a complete failure I didn't even know what I was doing <laughs> and I remember on that on that time I get to meet some girl uh, her name is uh, Sabrina Cotuno Sabrina she worked for Gravity Falls. She was a story writer, or, uh, I'm sorry, um, storyboarder for Gravity Falls. And she was running her own book in there because she couldn't find a place in the market that will run her book. And as that, you have a set of guys that uh, got together with a couple ex, I think they were like some renowned names out there. And one of the writers for C Nation, he was releasing a comic book on his own. And he did it through Kickstarter. And, you know, it, you can go through a lot of that. And the list goes up to Keanu Reeves today. You know, he got that that big release that he got through Boom that originally was through Kickstarter. So in a way, it feels that it's shifting a little bit mm-hmm. with with time, with um, being able to produce something maybe smaller, but keep the ownership of that and, you know. I, th- I think that's thing. a lot of it. Is they they want they want their reins back. 
they want to be able to draw something and keep it. You know, I, I, I've probably been the villain on the show, but like when you work for DC, that's DC's, you know, no matter what you do, what, yeah. how far you take it, it's theirs. They can not, do whatever they want. They can credit you or not credit you or cut you out or whatever. Cause they paid for it, you know? True. And I, I think we see now these, you know, like I said, these pretty big names, Heck, Grant Morrison was the latest one to come out and be like, screw all this. <laughs> no, yeah, totally. And it make, right. I mean, it's, in a way, it makes sense, now. though. It makes total yeah. sense. Yeah, I, and that that's that honestly, coming from a legal background, it was that was hugely important to me. And I think it's a really an interesting time um, in comics publishing right now. It's fascinating to me. Um, just how... And we've seen some big empires almost crumble. I mean, DC's in sh- tatters. I mean, we're compared to where they used to be. I mean, we're we're seeing a real power shift from the publishers to back to the artists. It, it's returning you know, to the right? artists in a yeah. way. I think that's okay. exact words. That's that's what I'll say. It's returning to the artists. Well, because they're finding different outlets to get that out there. And I think we're also seeing now where, like you said, you know, the guys willing to work with you and things is because they're kind of like, well, why not? You know, I'm not bound by this anymore. You know, why? Why can't I? There's no contracts. There's no no exclusivity like it used to be. Is that is that you remember that old big old case of uh, McFarlane, Jim Lee and, you know, all the all the original image creators and founders. I mean, they sort of got through that. In a very bad way, and I, in, I'm kind of like a believer that probably they were that the spark that opened a bunch of other stuff and created that opportunity for other artists. Like we you know, after that you had Aspen, you have all these other companies coming up that became big on the yeah. '90s towards the thousands. Well, they showed you could do it a different way. Truly, without yeah. having to go to. But then you have the big thing with Diamond Comics not doing as good. And losing so many contracts, and again, that feels to me that everything is bouncing back to to, to yeah. the owners. Yeah, yeah it's been a real shakeup. But it's interesting. Lucas talked about that, you know, where this origin was, and that's right in my wheelhouse. I'm a little older than Lucas, um, and so I grew up uh, kid of the the nasty '90s comic boom. You know, just um, <laughs> I've got I've got. Long box of long box of, of uh, executioner song still still bagged and boarded. You know if you're a if if you're looking for you know Rob Liefeld and uh, feetless covers, then you know I'm your man because uh, that's that's what I was buying and that's what I was raised on. And seeing the see, living through the genesis of that and thinking, wow, this is. This is this revolution, and these you know these creators are going out and they're starting this label. But then, that, what did that turn into? That turned into McFarlane and Neil Gaiman. I mean, he's guilty a little bit of himself doing the exact same thing. So the Kickstarter thing, the 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 creator owner, the ability for the creators to get directly to. You know the consumer these days, and the, the comic reader is it's awesome. And what it's yeah. created, what I've seen just from my limited exposure to it through Lucas is the guys that have the talent that do the art. Man, that's a community, and that's what you know. This these guys are coming and agreeing to do these things because they can see, you know, the kind of work that Lucas is. is talent recognizes and, talent. And Danny has produced absolutely, and so they they can see like the, the the small little stable that we've put together, and hey, we we've, we've got a body. We're starting to produce a little bit of a body of work, and it's awesome just how much it's how much community you know is shared between a lot of these artists, and and just how generous so many of them really are. Yeah. And that's what's been awesome. You know, just some of the names that that I've seen just correspond, or just even getting a like on Facebook or something from somebody that, oh my God, I grew up, I grew up reading this guy's work. I grew up looking, you know, I had 
Yeah. Posters I have on my his walls. work bag to board. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. You know, yeah. I've got. I've got. I've got a book of that guy's slab. You know, and that's it's 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 a really cool feeling. And like I said, I I, I hope it works for you guys because I've I've loved everything so far. So. I, I personally, I think the last Panther is going to work. You've got a lot of history and politics in this. I'm sure there'll be a mystery or two also in there. I'm impressed. Yeah, I've got to keep Lucas from uh, making me run a superhero through the middle of <laughs> 1860s other world in the United States. And... Put Tonto in a cape, huh? Right. <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I mean, you've got to say, it, if, if Superman had, if Kal El had I'm landed not, in 1860 instead of 1960. Right. funny to me. I'm, I'm just kind of on the silly side. I mean, <laughs> to me, I'm, I, I read Scott Young and <laughs> stuff yeah. like that. I'm a dead fan. So I make everything kind of silly and goofy and like weird faces and jokes left and right. So, <laughs> and the capes. We have to have the capes. <laughs> it's, like, it's like, you know, we always have this argument we're clean between the our heavy metal is kind of different. It's I like horses on my heavy metal, like Ronnie James Dio, you know, and he's not with the horses. Are you talking about me? Horses and dragons. Yes, I like horses and dragons and stuff likes- like that. My heavy metal, and he's like, Nah, man, I don't need none of that. And he likes the, he likes the kind of heavy metal that oh, fantasy and drag. I'm not not a big <laughs> fantasy guy. I was a, Sci-fi light, but you know, I was always I was an X-Men guy. I, I was I, I read X-Men from the time I was in third grade to present. You know, that was that was my jam. But Lucas likes his heavy metal with a little mixed with a little Lord of the Rings. It, it goes it goes super well, man. Yeah. Hey, Christopher Lee recorded metal albums. I'm just saying. He did. Yeah. It's true. Yep. I want to echo what uh, Les said. I think it's I think it's going to do well. It's such a original concept. That's something I'm always looking for. Uh, you know, when I'm when I when I look at some of the stuff that's coming out, and go, okay, I I've read this before, or maybe a little bit tricked up, maybe a little bit different, but I've read something like this. This is. This has me intrigued, um, I'm, so I think it's going to do real well as well. And if it means Thanks, anything, man. he's a big fan of westerns, so yeah, yeah. Well, I like capes too, but I do like yeah. westerns. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm not even really, honestly, a western guy. Now, I do. I will say that I think East of West is one of the one of the better books of the last decade. Um, but you know, um, you know, I my go tos were historically a little more the serious fare. A lot of Vertigo, you know, Vertigo was certainly my jam back in the day. Um, just about, just about anything that they were producing under that title, you know, I, I was, I was, I was reading just, you know, religiously. So that's really what I wanted to come up. That's, that's where I wanted to go is I love, I don't get me wrong. I, I think that. Uncanny X Force is one of the greatest books ever written. I mean, I start to finish. I like my superhero stuff, but you know, I when it came down to it and wanted to come up with something that, you know, what was something that I could sit down and commit to and have a passion to, you know, work the as hard as it was going to to you know to to require um you know it just i went down this this just kind of went down this rabbit hole and and started started kind of talking with lucas about hey i've got this idea and he kind of i think he really was hoping it was going to be more modern day because he liked the idea like oh yeah we can do you know like military women to Airplanes with war paint on them, you know, things like Man, that. I was flying all over the place. <laughs> yeah. I was flying. I have like weird guns. I was thinking, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Is the artistic side going to push you to that? You're like, oh, you know what? We can do a lot of uh, steampunk on this. 
I and put all those easy. gears and weapons and stuff. And it, at the end of the day, you know, I, 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 I mean, whenever you, you get to read some of the stuff that, that, that Clean writes, and part of it has to do with, you know, by being able to read Alice. And he's a great writer. Though. I'm really happy, uh, you know, that we, we were able to find, you know, find each other, like, over the years. I think he's been probably years trying to do something like that, and that was you know, Liz, you know, mm-hmm. where he is trying to find someone that can work with me, that we can do something and team up and make it work. And uh, the way he writes is very, very specific. His conversations, the whole thing, it, it flows so nice. And, you know, one thing is reading it through the script and you see the script and you see the whole thing coming together. It looks great. Uh, so, you know, I think the whole idea of like just taking this very real crude way to see a different reality it's amazing though it's it's you know it, it it's pretty cool yeah i like things like that um jason aaron does a lot of that but he goes back to like biblical times and gives us kind of an else world you know what if what if this happened instead of this kind of thing and it, it's interesting because it makes you think especially if you know the history of what's not happening. <laughs> yeah. So for me, it's it's easily for the biblical times. I'm I'm pretty aware of what happened there. So to see a story out there, it's it's entertaining. It makes you think. You know, it's like wow. What if you know, like you said, what if that kid didn't die? You know. Yeah. I, right. Yeah. Yeah. It started. Like I said, I I I started researching on this, and I the Elseworld world thing really wasn't. That wasn't my that I didn't have that in mind, really, honestly. I had um originally I, I originally knew that I wanted to do something um with the Native American culture. I was a yeah. big fan of Scout um and back in the day and um I just think it's it was kind of a it was a it's it's a thematic setting that I find really very interesting and I think it's really pretty underserved. Um, I yeah. think that there's a lot of story there that's untapped. And, you know, I, I joke about Lucas wanting to wanting to add, you know, elements <laughs> into the story to make it a little more fun. But we did have we did go down some, uh, you know, in some in, in some directions with, hey, there could you know, there's a lot of there, there's a lot of spiritual and really mythical, you know, uh, elements that, that you get into. And yeah. so, you know, you can kind of rub up against that world really, really easily. So I knew that I wanted to play in that sandbox in particular, but this just kind of the spark of an idea um, hit me just, oh, what if, what if they held some of this land? How would they have done that? And to go and piece that together was very satisfying. It was, it was, like I said, it literally was, it, it was this huge research project that I, that I brought upon myself. And I mean, I'm done with it now, so I can, I guess I can say I had fun. It was really, really <laughs> frustrating <laughs> for, for a really long time. Um, but I really did. I literally got done and it's like, I've done it. You know, I had my, my while I'm moment. And then just to realize like, all right, you know, the story dipshit. So what are you going to do now? <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, you got a world, but what happens now? So it's kind of back to square one, but, but it was, it was, it was, it, it just creatively, it was, um, it was a good process to start that with and doing this kind of work. Um, anything that I've ever done or ventured into, um, in, in writing in any way has been very, very stark. Very, you know, I, I, my, I've lived in a world for the last 20 years that's, you know, it's, very exacting and very precise and, and very, very much um, based in reality, in fact. So to take some of that, um, honestly, some of the research style that I use, you know, in my professional life and apply that to something to be creative, um, you know, I, I found a lot of satisfaction in, in, in that and just in kind of the process. Um, and I, I think, and honestly, it was really kickstarted from 
um, the story wise, at least it was, it, it, it was really, really, really kickstarted from getting to work on Lucas's book, getting to, you know, showing Lucas some ideas and rewriting a little bit of dialogue. And Lucas was very encouraging, you know, uh, Lucas, like I said, I, I originally was just going to translate and maybe do a little bit of editing because that was really the world that I that that I'd lived in for a long time. I've I'd done a lot of editing work, but not a lot of creative writing work. So, you know, for Lucas to trust me with that and to be as encouraging as he was, then it's been a bit, it, it's it's been pretty tremendous actually. It's pretty cool. Yep, that's awesome. Well, I'm excited to read it now. Nobody's asked the question, though, is what's the panther, right? Is the I, last panther, what does the panther mean, right? I kind of took panther as the tribe. So I will, I will, I think, I think I will give this away, Lucas. Are you there? I don't know if he's even there. <laughs> Well, he's not here to object. So, <laughs> so in this world, the Panthers are going to be a think of it as a think of it as a special forces or the the Black Ops, the Navy SEALs of the Native Nation. In particular, like I told you, you're going to have a lot. You're going to have a lot more. Um, you have a lot more in the way of skirmish and uh, land battle that's still raging in the South, in particular. Um, and the 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 Comanche region of the Native Nation um, is going to attract a certain element of tribe and you know your historically more fierce warrior types and that's where in my research where i came up with um our you know the last panther being two crows as a kiawa and do and go back and read on on the kiawa and they didn't play around and so yeah. what what this is going to be is a the Panthers were a group of um, particularly uh, tough banditos, essentially, that would encroach into U.S. lands and take on, you know, special uh, uh, operations to, you know, better their position in the South. In the in in the war that's still raging, particularly over the Arkansas Territory, that the the Comanche just refused to secede, a, even though the the Native Nations' standpoint is that's the United States. The Comanches just won't go with it, essentially. Yeah. So what the Panthers are going to be is a group of uh, a group of particularly um, skilled and effective warriors that create tremendous havoc uh, for the U.S. government and are a real thorn in the side of the Native Nation Tribal Council um, that are, you know, whose who's first priority is keeping the peace. Um, so that's mm. going to be that's going to be that that's what the panthers that that's that's what that refers to is uh the the group and so we'll we'll be telling that history we've we've already got um we've already got in fact uh every issue will probably start with five six seven pages of flashback let's let's sit down kids it's a history lesson um yeah. And issue two, in fact, is you're, we're going to see the first of our uh, operations that the Panthers uh, undertake and why uh, 
why there's only one of them left, quite frankly. Hmm. Well, gosh, that sounds like enough adventure for plenty of books. So, yeah. Yeah. And so this, you know, what's it, and then what this ultimately looks like is we're going to have a bunch of action up front. We've got, I've got, I've got, a, like I said, I've got a story arc that's got a whole bunch of action that's going to take place in, in far away, far away from the center uh, of this, of this world. But then after that, I've got, you know, I've got a possibility on this, on uh, just on this general story of a real kind of lone wolf and club uh, path that I can go really any direction. I have an, I have a, I have a whole, country to play with i've got <laughs> you know i've got i've got there's no california it's still mexico the there's you know there's about three quarters of texas and it's still the republic of texas it's, exactly we there's a that. lot of places to play very cool sorry guys to get to get a mini second though no it's all good yep yeah, you were gone, and they. I, 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 what? Yeah, I need to object something. What was it? I. Uh, <laughs> well, I, I, gave up, I, I gave up the story on the Panthers on exactly who the Panthers were. Oh, that's that's. Oh, yeah, that's it's probably the best of the whole thing, though. And they can have superpowers. <laughs> now they bounce. <laughs> and capes. <laughs> capes. <laughs> no, yeah, I I do love the concept. That there is a there is this one concept for the actual the actual panther, the uh, the main character that it Danny just came up with, and it's pretty pretty cool. It looks pretty pretty badass. I mean, uh, the last one, the one with the the actual crows. Do you remember which? Do you know what I'm talking about, Clint? No. Something that Danny gave us. Yeah, the one that he sent like a few redesigns for issue number two. Oh yeah, yeah, that one was pretty cool. Cool. All right, so the book is called The Last Panther, and the Kickstarter starts March fifteenth. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Right. Um, go ahead and put in and um, mention your website and, and social media, so. Uh, our listeners can follow you and, and get updates, and when when this starts up, and they can go ahead and have the opportunity to fund fund this book, which I'm sure we'll put the link up to in the notes, right? Yep. We get a um, I think like whenever we get the preview up, we can probably go for that, and I uh, can share you with you guys, so you can just directly share that, and that will take them directly to the campaign. That'll be awesome. Yeah, yeah sure. and everything's through Hold Fast Comics, just like it sounds. Hold Fast Comics, and that right now our biggest uh, our biggest source has been through the Facebook group. Quite frankly, that's where we've gotten the most. Uh, that's where we've gotten the most eyes and where we've had the most reactions. So that's where we've been posting. That's where we've been putting up a lot of the a lot of the. Um, we put the preview up, and I think we've had three or four new posts. Um, Danny and Danny Terraza is amazing. He's down, he's, he's down in Buenos Aires. I haven't even ever physically even met the dude, but he's one of Lucas's long time buddies and he's awesome. The work he does in this book is just awesome. I think he put something up the other day that was actually part of the rewards that are going to be on the Kickstarter that I think he just put the pencils up, but man, the. Mm-hmm. These guys have put together some things. Lucas is doing one of the covers for issue one, and what they put together is and blows me away. I, it's gonna yeah. look pretty cool, though. I was looking at y'all's map. That is pretty cool. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. It's so you see the little red Arkansas is in red. Mm-hmm. That is a uh, that that's that's the hotly contested land right there. I'll put it in Discord for you guys. 
I don't think that I don't think that we actually labeled. I mean, it's pretty obvious what most of that stuff is. But it's uh, the the comic page has a label. I think I labeled that on the on the yeah on the page. yeah in the yes. book it is. I don't think we did on the no not on that one. Yeah. All right. Well, we wish you continued success. I'm sure th- I'm sure this is going to do real well. And thank you for being with us today. Yeah, thank you so much yeah. for inviting us, guys. Yeah, thank you. Guys. Thomas, thank you so much. Well, fun. Yep. yep. And we will be right back. And we're back. And with this week, we are uh, debuting a new segment. Uh... Geek news. We're gonna have a couple couple of news items that we're gonna throw out out there and kind of do a little discussion about about the story. So this should be fun. This is taking place of our our picks uh, that we used to do. So um, this week it will be myself and Mike. Mike, do you want to go first or you want me to go? Oh, I can go first. No problem. Okay. Um, so the story that I have spotted um, is apparently um, there's some rumblings about a Beetlejuice two. Yay! Uh, <laughs> so <laughs> apparently, at this point, I mean, okay, yes, this is this is a thing that has been theoretically off and on for thirty years now. Um, at this point. We've actually allegedly got Michael Keaton and Winona Ryder attached, um, <laughs> which is a big leap from other previous attempts. Um, and this is being um, shopped by Plan B Entertainment, which is Brad Pitt's production company. Um, I I have to say, I am skeptical as hell on this one. But I think it's interesting that there's any news source out there at all that would even talk about this without there actually being a a production schedule i think it's a little crazy that i mean we don't even have a director attached at this point so why do we think this is going anywhere um i don't know it's i find it interesting well they've talked about it for a couple of years quite a few years and um they wanted tim burton to do it and he was just like nah you know i've got too many pokers in the fire but to actually hear that brad pitt's production company got a hold of it is a positive foot because i don't think they even had that to begin with so this is good news (laughs) Uh, uh i'm still not convinced that it's news at all but yeah i think i think it's interesting that it's that the idea is even out there and that people are even still thinking about it i mean it's, it seems like something along these, the lines for the, for this particular project pops up every couple of years ago or, or so. You know, there's talk of, oh, well, we're going to do a Beetlejuice sequel, and just about as quickly as it pops up, it disappears. And you know, so yeah, I I I, I don't. I, 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 we thought the same thing about Hocus Pocus, and it's in production right now, though. Look how long that took. But it's so, actually in but it's, it's, in it's actually in production, right? Yeah, we're, but they we're, talked we're, about it. it. Seemed like every Halloween, it was like Hocus Pocus Two is going to come out. So, well, Todd McFarlane's talked about a, a Spawn film since the first <laughs> one, and that was thirty years ago. Right. right. Well, this was thirty so, years ago, and it's honestly yeah. been three years since they've even gotten Tim Burton to say anything about it. Yeah. So I'm just, like I said, be interesting to see if in six months or a year we're talking about this for real. I think if his Wednesday show does good, he'll do it. Yeah, okay, maybe. That's that's what I think, anyways. And I'm liking the direction they're taking his Wednesday. It's not his normal Johnny Depp. Christina Ritchie kind of thing, so. (laughs) 
should be good. <laughs> uh -huh. We'll see. <laughs> Fingers crossed. As long as it's better Wait. than the other Adams Family thing that's on the in the works, we'll see. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Les, what's your thoughts? That he hates Rob Zombie. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm curious. Is that Rob going to be in this one too? <laughs> no, uh, just his wife. <laughs> yeah, just only Cherry. It's it's a property that has been talked about so many times. I'm bored with it. Mm. In fact, as far as the movie itself, I'm bored with it. <laughs> I was not that impressed with <laughs> the original. Busting on Burton and Zombie in the same breath. I can't. <laughs> you knew the job was dangerous when you took it. Oh, my heart. I mean, the original. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, Les. I, I, I thought that the original was fun. But, Ben, that's kind of like a lightning in a bottle. I'm just. I'm just afraid they're going to do it, and, you, and the response is going to be, "Why did they do it?" Yeah. Right. Well, your your target audience was your your gothy emo kids thirty years ago, me, and Basically, what yeah. we re what we remember from thirty years ago was so great and amazing, and it's just because you're a kid. It, you know, you go back to places and you're like, wow, I didn't realize it was this small. I, I don't think they will ever be able to meet our expectations with a second one. Just because when we watched it, the time, because we are the target audience, the time we watched it, 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 it won't hit the same way. Right. We are so far gone from that time and from yep. that moment. There's, yeah, there's just no way. Yep. And it, it doesn't mean the same thing. Right. When I saw Lydia, it was like, oh, my God, there's other people out there. <laughs> <laughs> right. But to see 30 years on, to see Winona yeah. Ryder basically cosplaying as herself. Well, and it's, it's thing, no longer a, seems... a, a shock. You know what I'm saying? When people met Lydia, they're like, oh, she's kind of weird and funky. Everybody nowadays is weird and funky. It's not shocking anymore. Right. <laughs> so that's the norm. Make her a hipster and let's talk. <laughs> right. But that's a reboot, not a sequel. Right. So we shall see. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, for my news item, it's also... It's also kind of a it's a sequel to a classic film, although Wes may may think this is more of a classic than Beetlejuice. Um, it was announced that Steven Spielberg is going to direct a follow up to the 1968 film Bullet, starred Steve McQueen, and this is this is a follow up. This is not a remake. This is not a reboot. He's 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 actually going to do a a film following up the character that uh, was played by Steve McQueen and his Steve McQueen's son and and granddaughter are actually producers of the film. Wow. So um, and Joss Singer, who I'm not not familiar with, is going to be writing the script. This surprised the hell out of me because, first of all, of all, if anything to do a sequel, I would never pick Bullet. Mm. I'm not. I'm not saying it's a good film or or anything. I, I I'll be honest. I've not seen it. I need to see it. I've heard good things about it, but it's this is definitely out of left field. Yeah, uh, I'm not saying it's a bad idea. I just it's just it's kind of it kind of shocked me to hear this. I'm definitely interested, especially if 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 they keep it in that timeline. So we're talking late '60s, early '70s. I think that would be cool. Um, 
I mean, we'll see. It's, especially depending on on who they get to cast. Yeah. Which I've already I had already seen some fan casting, at least for the title character. And who knows? Maybe we might do some. We may do a casting call for the sequel. How about that, guys? <laughs> <laughs> Anyone, anyone want to take the guess on who some were saying on Twitter should should play Bullet? Because they would put up an image, they would put up an image of Steve McQueen in in the in the kind of the black turtleneck with the the what do you want to call it the holster that kind of goes around the arm that that thing. I don't know. I'm sure there's a technical name for it, but I'd I, I'd cast Jensen. Of course you would. Of course you would. <laughs> but that's not who they, that's not who people who that some of these were were casting. But anyone else want to guess? No. I I would say Channing Tatum. I could okay. see that. I could yeah. see that. Especially with the turtlenecks. I because when I, when I saw that I was like okay he may be a little old and then I went back and looked and. McQueen was like in his late thirties when they were filming the original film. This actor is fifty three. Daniel Craig. No, yeah. no. <laughs> I don't know. I I could kind of see that too. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> I still think it's a bad idea to recast Steve McQueen for anything. <laughs> Even the Blob. <laughs> well, they already did that, so never mind. <laughs> have you seen that one, Liz? I have not. <laughs> 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 to be to be honest, that's part of the reason why I picked this article. So it's <laughs> Steve McQueen, my man. Steve McQueen. Yeah. But I Stop thought this, him and nobody notices. <laughs> This this kind of surprised me. Yeah. Yeah, well, I don't think anybody kind of foresaw him remaking the West Side Story either, but, you know. Yeah. True. And in case y'all are curious about the movie we're talking about, it is on HBO Max, so. Bullet? Bullet? Uh-huh. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Just make sure we're talking about the same movie here. No, the blob. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what I kind of figured. About <laughs> that one's probably on here too. Oh, at this point, the blob's probably everywhere. I wouldn't be surprised if it's. Uh, it got around pretty good. <laughs> public, public, public domain. Yeah. So, Les, what's your, what's your thoughts? Okay, the. Casting of the public is wrong. <laughs> this guy, this is the guy that wanted to get away from doing typecasting because he was getting typecast as Bond. Yes. So I doubt seriously that he's going to go toward this one. But. Well, I would think they would want to do. I think they would want to. Uh, and then I'm sorry for interrupting you. No. I think they. I think they would want someone younger because, on the off, on the possibility of this being real good, and it'd be real successful, mm-hmm. they got another. They got another franchise. They do. Yep. But this wasn't a franchise. The not first yet. Round. I know. Yeah, the first round yet. it was not a franchise. But in 2022, they, everything's a franchise. No, no. They, you get more than three people oh, watching come on, it. Lass. Boom, sequel. No, come on, that's that's the way they think. Mm-hmm. We're we're either going to do a sequel or we're going to do a spinoff and then turn that into a franchise. Yep, milk it. Yeah, I I would say just walk away from it. <laughs> and, and 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 if it doesn't if it doesn't work, they can turn around and remake it mm-hmm. and reboot it. We didn't mean that. Watch this one. <laughs> oh God, I'm hearing I'm hearing bad things about the new Texas Chainsaw Massacre. So I almost watched that this weekend, but I didn't. Mm. I, I 
No, I I I like those kind of movies, but I think I posted something on Discord about that. It was like the f- first thing I was hearing about a lot of it was, oh, the deaths are so gory. I'm like, it's a dude with a chainsaw. It's going to be kind of expect, gory. Right? Every movie of him was gory, yeah. And when you walk into a shed and he's got body parts hanging everywhere, it's a little gory. <laughs> yeah. so. I think this one's about influencers, though, and I was afraid I'd be siding with Leatherface going, man, shut her up. <laughs> I didn't watch that one. I don't want to tap into my homicidal instincts yet. <laughs> yeah, I've, that's that's a, that's one of the complaints I've heard was it tried to be too meta. It tried to have too much of a message. Yeah, message because that's what it is. It's it's these influencers who come to this dead town in Texas. They bought it. And they're going to turn around and 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 reinvest in all this kind of thing. Yeah, make it and, a clubby place. And then, and then they find and then they find out that there's actually people still living here. And I'm like, okay, including Leatherface. But the, one of the, one of the other things I heard was is, uh, and I'm not really sp- I don't think I'm spoiling too much. Is one of the one of the buildings has a Confederate flag, and of course. There's a black guy in a group, and of course he has he's he gets upset about that, and they and they kind of talk about that going kind of overboard about that. It, so it, it tries to have too many messages. Yeah, it tries to be too meta, and then there's the whole the whole thing with Sally, who was the original final girl in the first one, basically pulling a Jimmy Lee Curtis Halloween 2018 come back and she's ready to take on. Blow the face. I'm like, wow. Okay. So nothing really original here at all. Okay. Good. Yeah. Surprise, surprise. If I was tortured and got away from a guy with a chainsaw, I wouldn't go back. I wouldn't tempt fate the second time. <laughs> but screw that. I'm alive. Burn the town. <laughs> so. So you're not on board for a follow-up to Bullet? No, I'm not. Okay. That's, I mean, that's fine. To me, to me, it already, no pun intended, it ran its course. <laughs> did what so. it was supposed to the first time. Yeah. Or did what it could do the first time. <laughs> well, well I, think, I think the whole Rand's talking is a, a, referring to the car chase, which is one of the most famous car chases. In movie mm-hmm. history, oh, but yeah. but they did a a remake of Thomas Crown Affair. Why? <laughs> you know, to why, me, why 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 did why did they remake anything? Because they can. Yeah. Because Nostalgia. they have the rights to make money. Yeah. Right. yeah. Because so, because yeah. Rene Russo on a topless beach will sell tickets. That's why. Mm-hmm. Oh hell yeah. Yeah. That many years ago, yeah. No well, one right, wants yeah, to see nobody that wants to see that today. But, sure. <laughs> like, not but today. That was, shit, that was 20 years ago or something. I don't remember. Keep your yeah. ticket. <laughs> Who didn't want Whoa. to see Jacqueline Bissett in a, in a wet t-shirt? That, that almost went the wrong way there, Liz, when you said keep the, keep the ticket. It's like, it's like whoa. <laughs> yeah. So. Mikey, your thoughts? I am not interested. Not at all. I think I don't. I don't. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to say it's a huge mistake, but I don't care. It, it may be so long, long ago that you know. I mean, there, there's humongous question marks forms over the entire planet. They're like, <laughs> what the hell is bullet? Yeah, because it's because it's been that long. Yeah, right. who knows? I I don't know one way. I I don't know one way or another. But uh, you know, I I applaud the fact that they weren't they're not doing a remake. Because if they they came out and said, "Well, we're remaking Bullet," I'm going, "Okay, well, you know, all right, have fun." Hmm. I suppose if somebody's doing this with Bullet, then at least they're not doing a 
seventh attempt at something that's been done a bunch of times before already. So. Yeah. I mean, it's, so yeah, I mean, that's, that's kind of thing. It's, it's unique. It's different. It's not, you know, it's not like, okay, well, we know this is done well and yeah, it's been rebooted five or six times. So what the hell, why not one more, one more? It's something different. So I, I, I applaud, I applaud that much. Well, wouldn't something like Birdemic 2 be something you want to go see? <laughs> if, if Is that I, a trick if question? I, if I enjoyed the first one, then yeah, I might be interested in the second one. But you know, there is a Birdemic too, too. Well, I'm sure. But it went straight to video, just like the first one did. So you know, I mean, when you make films that go straight to video, you can do whatever the hell you want. You make them cheap, and people will rent them for five or six bucks, and all of a sudden you're making money. Yeah. If, if they make enough, they go, hey, let's do it again. Yeah. yeah. This is that's, why there are what seven Sharknado movies or something. Something like that. Something like that. So I, I, I'm I'm not dismissing it, but I'm not I'm not I'm not saying I'm totally on board, especially since I haven't seen the first one. So um, I just like I said, I commend them on doing something different. And so hey, let's do. You know, let's let's do something. You know, something that's already been done several times already. Now, could they just do a late '60s, early '70s cop drama and not be called Bullet? Yeah, they could do that. True. But then everybody would say, "Hey, this is the same plot that they used in Bullet." Well, I mean, it'll be a well. I'm for doing a follow-up, but I mean, you know, a, a perfect example is to remake a, co- a RoboCop. Uh-huh. You know, people want to go see the remake and go, well, this is nothing like the original. Well, well no shit. But if you went, if it was called something uh-huh. else and people went in and saw it, they'll come out and go, well, that's, that's, that's RoboCop. They just didn't call it that. It's like, how do you freaking win? Yeah. You, you can't you, nowadays. You, you, you know, you, you can't use the name for the for nostalgia and 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 guaranteed butts in the seats for opening weekend. But if you do something that's totally different, then they're going to go, "Well, that's a copy of something else that was more successful." Like, well, how you win is you don't care that, what they say as long yeah. as they gave you their money. That's true. That is how you win. Yep. Yep. Or the winning move is not to play. How about a nice game of chess? There you go. <laughs> War games. All right. Mm. I'm surprised we. Oh, I'm surprised we hadn't had a remake of that. <laughs> oh Lord. <laughs> I know I watched that within the last year or so, and granted, the technology is so ancient. The story overall, I think, kind of holds up well. The music is horrible Hmm. because it's that 80 music that Mike hates. It does not hold up at all. But um, ah, but I, I still think it's a pretty good film. But that could be nostalgia there. <laughs> I will at least admit that. Oh, and something else I had talked about earlier: the 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 science the sci-fi film that I thought, <clears throat> excuse me, that might have been an influence on Alien. The film is It: The Terror from Beyond Space. That is the film. So I wanted to get that in there. Yeah. And so I, I remember it being it, but I just couldn't remember the rest of it. I, I like that. I like that film. It's a pretty good film for for a B sci fi film. It it holds up pretty well, pretty good. Because there's really not a lot of special effects in it. I mean, so yeah, there's there's a there's a couple things in there that you go, okay, that doesn't make sense, but okay, what? Yeah, you can do that with films today. So, mm. 
All right. That's our initial geek news segment. That was pretty good. That was pretty fun. Yep, that was. Always. Mm, give us a chance to rant and we're happy. What? Us rant? No. Uh, I have no idea. What, no idea what I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. Well, neither do I, so. <laughs> All right. Uh, any special shout outs this week? Well, just a big thanks to Lucas and Clint for hanging out with us and chatting with us. Yeah. Definitely. Good time. Yep. Totally agree. Anything else? Nope. Okay. Nope. All right. We'll go ahead with our regular shout outs. I want to thank Pop Goes to Culture Podcast Network for allowing us to be part of a great group of fellow podcasts. We definitely want you to check them out. There will be a link in the show notes for them. I want you also to check out the fine men and women who make up Potter and Family who have been so kind enough as to spread the word of the fellowship on Twitter by retweeting our links. Uh, the way you can check them out is to do a search, hashtag Potter and Family, one word, and just scroll through whatever catches your eye. Please, please, please click on that link and download that episode, and we hope you have a good time listening to them. Thank you, guys, as always. want to thank Manny the Martyr for supplying uh, the music to the podcast. There will be a link in the show, note where, show notes where you can check out their music. Thank you, guys. And finally, you, dear listener, thank you for downloading and listening, uh, or downloading, listening to today's episode. I'm getting tired. It's a long. It's been a long. It's been a long evening. Mm-hmm. Um, we value your feedback. Any questions, comments, suggestions, complaints, observations, what have you, please send them our way. There are several ways you can reach out to us. Uh, our email address is email at the fellowship of the geeks dot net. Or you can go to the website, and on the About Us page, there is a contact form that you can fill out. Uh, on our Discord, we do have a channel specifically designed for feedback, so you can post your comments there if you like. Uh, on social media, we are on Facebook, The Fellowship of the Geeks, and on Twitter, we are at Fellowship Geeks. Follow us there. If you like to follow our personal Twitter accounts, Mike can be found at Mikey Geek. Liz can be found at LN underscore Geek. Les may or may not be found at Fake Les Webster. And I can be found at Tom TC Geek. And from wherever you download our podcast, if you would please take a couple moments to rate and review our show, it would be greatly appreciated. Anything else before we say goodbye? Just thanks, everybody. Yep. Thank you, everybody. Hope you enjoyed the episode. Thank you for listening, everybody. We do appreciate your support. And until next time, geek on, my friends. We thank you for listening to the show. Comments, suggestions, and questions can be sent to email at thefellowshipofthegeeks.net You can follow us on Facebook at The Fellowship of the Geeks and on Twitter at Fellowship Geeks Until next time